Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdale here. In this video I'm going to continue my series of presentations on partial differential equations. Now in this video we're going to look at certain properties of the heat equation or the diffusion equation given by uh, equation 1. Now in this context k is a constant and we also couple um, 1 with uh, some Cauchy data so uh, when t equals 0, we have this, this given function 5x. Now from a physical point of view, um, you can think of uh, u being the temperature in an infinitely long bar at position x and time t. Okay, And this uh, function here is just the initial temperature. Okay, Now I'll talk more about this in other videos, but um, in order to, to solve this problem, um, we have to do a little bit of housekeeping. So we have to look at five important properties of the heat equation one or the diffusion equation one. Okay, so that's the subject of this particular presentation. So, the ideas, or the five properties, are known as invariance properties. Okay, now there are a whole bunch of them here. I'm going to talk you through them uh, quickly and then give a, a sketch of the proof for um, uh, these kinds of uh, properties. Okay, so now these five properties on the surface probably won't seem like they're, they're so important, but when we actually come to solving this problem here, we're going to use each of these five properties. So like I said before, this particular presentation is a little bit of housekeeping, a little bit of preparation, so that we can actually get on and solve the, uh, the original problem one, two. Okay, so the first property is the following. If u of x comma t is a solution to one, then for each fixed y, the translate u of x minus y comma t is also a solution. So let me show you how to uh, how to solve that, or how to prove it. Okay, so let u of x comma t solve one. Now remember, one is just this partial differential equation here. Okay. Now, uh, some of you will look at this and go, "Well, that's obvious." But let me just let me just um, uh, show you how to prove it. Now, I'm going to use the chain rule. This this may be a little bit of overkill, but but let me let me uh, show you how to do it anyway. Okay, so I'm going to let Q be x minus y, and then I'm going to consider. u of q comma t. Okay, so essentially I want to show that this satisfies uh, the uh, diffusion equation. Now if I write out my little chain rule to form the derivatives that we want to um, involve in our uh, argument for involving one, then I can come up with the following. Okay, so u sub x is just u sub q times q sub x. Okay, and u sub q, uh, q sub x is just going to be 1. That u sub q. Okay, so if I take that again and differentiate, then just basically replace u with u sub q. So it's going to be u sub q sub q times q sub x. Okay, well this is 1 again, so we get u sub q q. And the last derivative in our diffusion equation is u sub t. Now that's actually not going to change at all, so we don't really need to do anything for that one. Okay, so 
if we consider the following, okay, we want to show that this equals zero. That means that um, this will also solve one. Okay, so this then is that. And we know that this, sol th this is zero because we've assumed that u of x comma t solves one. Okay, so that is the end of the proof for part one. The second property that we're going to talk about is the following. If you use a solution to one, then every derivative of u is also a solution. So for example, u sub x is a solution, u sub t, u sub xx, etc. Okay, so let's discuss how we prove that. So I'm just going to prove it for u sub x. So let's replace u with u sub x. Uh, sorry, let's, let's, yes, let's replace u with u sub x. And we want to show that this is zero. Now, with these functions, we always assume that we can uh, move the uh, partial derivatives around or the subscripts around. So if I move that in there and move those or one of those in there, then I have a common factor, if you like, of u sub x. Now, k is a constant, so I can move it in to the brackets. And I know that this is 0 because u is a solution to uh, 1. So the derivative of 0, of course, is just 0. So that's proved part 2. OK? Part 3. Every linear combination of solutions to one is also a solution. Now this is just, just follows from the linearity of one, but let's actually prove it. So let's say V and W be functions of X and Y. Okay, what we want to do is show that every linear combination of, of these two um, solutions is also a solution. So for all constants, say alpha and beta, consider the following. So We want to show that this equals zero. Okay, then you know th this linear combination will will satisfy the original PDE one. Okay, so this is just um, moving the derivatives around a bit. So if we expand this bracket, remember alpha and beta are constants. We'll get the following. And now I can team this up with this and team that up with that. Okay, now this is zero because V is a solution to one, and this is zero because W is a solution to one. Okay, so that's proof three then. Okay, what about the next one? Okay, we're making our way through. Every, uh, if s of x comma t is a solution to one, then so is its integral. Thus, from property one, this translate is a solution, and so is this expression. This, this expression is, is going to become uh, come in very handy. Okay, now um, what is g here? g is any suitable function that makes the integral converge. This is an improper integral. Okay, so how do we prove this? Well, let's 
take this, differentiate it, and show that that actually satisfies the uh, diffusion or heat equation one. Okay. Okay, so here we have S sub T minus K S sub e equals, equals zero by assumption. So let's consider the following. Now we're going to use Leibniz rule here for differentiating under the integral signs. Okay, so we want to show that this uh, equals zero. So if I move this inside, okay, I'll get, using Leibniz rule, I'll get the following. Okay, and I can move these inside here. Now I may be uh, slightly abusing the notation here. And then, for example, if the k goes in as well, you can form one integral. Okay, now this is zero because of this. Okay, and, um, and the uh, translate property one. Okay, so that solved point four. And now the last thing we want to solve or show is that if u of x comma t is a solution to one, then for each positive value a, the dilated function u of this is also a solution. So let's see how we can uh, how we can prove that. I'll just do it on here. Okay, so let u of x comma t solve one, and let's consider. following. So if I sort of set up my chain rule diagram, okay, uh, all right, u sub x is going to be u sub p times p sub x. Okay, so if p is that, p sub x is just going to be root a. If I repeat that, uh, u sub xx is just going to be this differentiated with respect to x. And just basically, you can run, run the same argument, just replace u with u sub p. So, so it's going to be u sub pp times p sub x times root a. This is root a, so it's going to be u sub pp times a. u sub t, well that's just going down this column, u sub q times q sub uh, t. Okay, now q is a times t, so q sub t will be just a. Okay. So, u sub q minus k u sub pp, we want to show that this equals zero. Okay, so u sub q is just going to be u sub t over a. u sub pp is just going to be u sub xx over a. So I can bring out the common factor of A. And because we've assumed this solves one, 
this thing in brackets is zero. Okay, so there are five important properties of the diffusion equation. Okay, now we're going to use each of those five properties in, in forthcoming videos to actually produce the solution to this uh, problem. So as you can see, most of the um, ways of proving this just involves either the chain rule or Leibniz rule for differentiating under integral signs. So please join me for the next video where we actually solve one and two.